Otokoyo, a secret game of hide and seek, one where all who play wear f- fox masks. <laughs> 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 It only begins when seven have gathered. You're the drawing of the seven. But it is not a normal game, as all who have played it have gone missing. Many whisper it is the, the work of demons, but that that is just a rumor. Or is it? This podcast is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Spoiler warning for whatever is in the title of this episode. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here comes a bonus episode of The Horror of Babylon, where we discuss Kakudenbo. I am Ryan, and with me as always is Daniel. Say hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. And Hef is here too. How y'all doing? Good to be here. And thank you to our patrons. We don't have seven yet, but once we have seven... There will be a death game. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so two more. Two more. But the first player is Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, the Mother of Dragons, and Logan, the Full, full metal, metal Patron, patron. And, and Ben, ben the, the Fourth, Patron, patron of, of Hope. Hope. And Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain, yo. Uh, and thank you to Forceman Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall, Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online, shop.forcemancomics.com. And if you make it into the store, say hello to the one who's not only the fifth demon, but he's also the sixth, seventh, and eighth demon, Ronald the Third, Grampus of Christmas. I like how he skips the fourth. He's the third, not the fourth, but the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Well, because the fifth one was the surprise one. Mm. Well, surprise. Uh, So we are doing a giveaway for Horseman Comics has given us four sets of Magic the Gathering secret layers. We gave away our first one yesterday on February 3rd. It was a foil Evil Dead secret layer that went to our patron, Logan the Second. Next month, we are going to give away a Princess Bride secret layer, and anybody can win that. You don't have to be a patron, so stay tuned for details on that. That'll be coming soon. Thank you to Four Horsemen for giving those to us to give away. And trigger warning... A whole bunch of kids die. (laughs) A whole, whole bunch. A whole lot of them. All they wanted was hot dogs. And none survive. But they live for a little bit longer in the phase of a light bulb. (laughs) Um, In our history with Kaku Rinbo, this was on Toonami. They put it on Toonami for Halloween in like 2005, 2006, something like that. And I saw it then, and I thought it was awesome. And I rewatched it in college and thought it was awesome and then hadn't seen it for like 15 years. And it, it's still good, but I, I don't think it lives up to the nostalgia for me personally. I remember, I, I want to say that I have a memory of when we had that anime club in high school that we watched it in there. I think I. If you did, I wasn't there. Okay. I May, well, maybe I, it was. I I, I have because I have seen this at some point, but I don't remember. I don't exactly remember how I, I have seen it. I remember we watched Fooly Cooly and The Cat Returns. Those are the only things I actually remember <laughs> watching. That was a, quite the dynamic. <laughs> well, it was. It had to be stuff that was short enough. Uh, 
Um, to keep the attention. <laughs> no, because we only had a limited amount of time, so it had to be short. Yeah. I think I came in at like the tail end of that, so I think you and you and Wes, I think, were running that for a little while before I even uh, knew it was a thing. I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't know. I have a lot of false memories in high school, too, so there's that. This was my first time watching Kaku Krabby Patties. The vampires are pure myth, superstition. I may be able to bring you proof that the superstition of yesterday can become the scientific reality of today. Background, uh, this short film premiered at the Tokyo International Anime Fair, where it won the award for notable entry in the general category. It was <laughs> the, gen <laughs> the general category. It's like, there's no generals in this. <laughs> uh, the fox is the the fox demon is the general of the demons. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Fair. Uh, it is written, directed, and produced by Shuhei Morita, who you may know from Tokyo Ghoul or Ninja Batman. And I wanted to. Sh we don't normally shout out the composers, but the score was written by Reiji Kitazato, who also did the music for Gankutsu, the Count of Monte Cristo, which is fantastic. And as I said earlier, this anime was shown on Adult Swim for Halloween in 2005. So if you've seen it before, that's probably where. And that's that. Another story in the classic, infallible three act structure. Good enough for Aristotle, good enough for The Simpsons. Mr. Sislak, I have a feeling there's going to be one more act to this story. Well, I'm not hanging around for that. Four rags. Structure and themes. So my first question I wrote was, who is the target audience? Like, to me, it almost felt like kind of a showcase like of what they could do with animation at the time. Because I don't feel like I saw a lot of this back like, during uh, to 2005. No, like, like in 2005, yeah. yeah. This like is, the cell shading kind of thing. It was one of the first ones I yeah. saw, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I feel like this was more of an animation showcase rather than an exclusive, like, target audience kind of thing. It felt like it felt like something that was trying to win an award. <laughs> okay, so what, about the animation, what do you think of the animation? Now, see, I'm I'm partial to these. I actually I like I'm I'm a huge fan of the uh, Wind Waker, uh, the Zelda game Wind Waker, and it does this like the cell shading thing. Back when people were bitching because they were just like, oh, it's not adult link. I don't want this kid stuff. Like, I thought it was actually really well done and really cool. Wind Waker's still my favorite. Wind, Wake, Wind Waker and Majora's Mask go back and forth a lot in my favorite Zelda kind of thing. But I, I don't I think this, I like this as far as the, cell, the actual animation because I don't feel like there's, there's just not a whole lot that do it and i think it's really neat to see every now and then it makes it stand out i guess it does yeah, yeah it's it's unique but whenever i like cell shading i like things with a little bit more color and this didn't always have a lot or it, it had a lot of color but it it's was mostly all, black and red it, it was mostly black and red and like everything's veiled in shadows which you know it's tr it's being spooky i felt like light tones like the like the shades of light were what really kind of pulled this one yeah. a lot of and I think maybe that's like what a lot of that animation was trying to do was just like show how they could really show brightness and darkness yeah I can definitely see this being a showcase like they're going hey we have this art style we want to try mm. uh, let's, yeah. let's 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 make something with yeah. it see I've seen more recent animations like Netflix I think had a few and like animes specifically mm -hmm. like this like I think Knights of Sidonia is the one I remember the most probably yeah like, that kind of does this yeah it does kind of do this and I remember the first time watching it and I couldn't figure out why it was off to me. Like I kept watching, I'm like, there's something weird about this and I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. And then it occurred, it it hit me that that's what they were doing. It was like a CGI kind of cell shaded things because some of those portions of Knights of Sidonia, I was watching it like a traditional hand drawn anime mm -hmm. and I couldn't figure out why it was doing something that my eyes didn't normally do. And then I realized it was like a shell, a cell shaded mm -hmm. CG kind of thing. I do think I know the target audience, though. Uh, Adult Swim watchers from 2005. <laughs> <laughs> the, this, the, uh, sitting here watching this now really did strike me as something that if I would have watched in 2005, it would have been like my favorite thing ever. I could definitely see that. Yeah. I, I do have a more fond memory of it. Like, I, I remember bringing it up and I've seen it. I had seen it before, but I'm like you, I hadn't watched it in like... 15 years so I was just like I remember I liked it when I watched it but I remembered next to nothing about it whenever I watched it this time around it really just reminds me of like uh, either those really short animes or those one shots they'd occasionally play mm. 
and you'd see it and go, oh, I love this, I'm so deep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you bought the Yu Yu Show movie and it's just like, what's this other Ninku thing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's exactly that. That's an OVA for a very long running series. It's not a one shot. That's what it felt yeah, like Yeah, but people us, who see it don't yeah. know that. <laughs> we never we got a name. We didn't yeah. go over here. <laughs> But that, that 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 that's what it really reminded me of watching it now was if I could if, even if I were to watch this maybe even just ten years ago I probably would have ranked in like Daniel's personal favorite things as a lot of stuff I like in it that that's who I think the target audience was uh, so older teenagers they're coming to get you Barbara speaking of teenagers let's talk about kids who are not quite teenagers <laughs> jump to characters. I have two categories. I have the kids and the demons. <laughs> Daniel, what did you think of the kids? Is asking for it a theme? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I just, hey, uh, all these children have gone missing. Let's go to the exact spot they've all gone missing. Yeah, I, I it, don't. It's not like they heard a rumor and it's a rumor kids are missing. People know kids are missing. <laughs> I guess you can justify it if you're looking for your sibling. Yeah. Or you're going with your friend who's looking for their sibling. Other than that, what are you doing? It's not even like there's a rumor of a prize. Or if there was, I missed it. Yeah, no, there wasn't. Like, if there it's, was, a, like, it, even if it would have been like a misleading prize, like you get to be it. A secret game of hide and seek. Yeah. One where all who play wear fox masks and only it begins with seven have gathered. It is no normal game. All who have played eight have gone missing. I just, I really don't want to blame the victims, but I'm sit I was sitting there watching this going, why would you go? I, I understood like the, the one kid, he's looking yeah. for his sister. I'd go look for my sister. I'd go look for even a really good friend. But everyone else, I'm like, guys, why? You got like the, the, the chubby bully who wants to, uh, uh, show the demons what's up. Tough. <laughs> I don't believe in no demons. It's a hot dog cart. It's a hot dog measuring contest. But something's obviously happening. There's thousands of light bulbs at the end of this. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's what I was thinking by the end of this. Got a problem with uh, kid logic, and I don't need to explain a whole lot about it. <laughs> it's like, that's the whole thing. Like, it's like, I, I, I'm not going to explain it. You just roll with it I guess I don't know. to be fair like I've seen some animes that operate off of less logic than that, that, that and I still watch them I'm just like I mean I guess <laughs> at least this one has the benefit of being short the demons I like these yeah I like the demons I thought yeah I, the, the little dudes made me laugh but but not in exactly a bad way I was like look at this little guy <laughs> I like the sound that the one maker yeah um, I like that they don't talk uh, aside from the the main one, I I did like that they don't talk. I'll get more into that in Kings and Coons. <laughs> that also kind of goes into my King versus my Coons because it's honestly like I I thought the demons like like as far as they were des how they were designed were really neat. Like they they were all unique. Like they were they were uniquely different from one another. Which yeah, I, they, they all looked different. They yeah. all kind of had like this wooden robot aesthetic. Going. Yeah, it was like yeah. I I picture this. I would pitch this to somebody. It's like uh, if. FNAF and the Beast from the East had a baby. I wanted to talk about Beast from the East and this. How do you think they do? I don't know. It's like we just randomly did these two things. One's like a horrible game of tag, and one's a horrible game of hide and seek. We'll put the beasts in this, but they just keep making up new rules. They would. Yeah. <laughs> the beasts are the demons. I'll kill you all! <laughs> I'll drive you crazy and I'll kill you all! I'm every nightmare you ever had! I am your worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. Scary shit. Is this short film scary? I think it would have scared me if I was like 20 years younger. I, I remember thinking it was creepy, and I still think I think that it has a creepy tone. It has a... Yeah, I think the music really aids in that. Mm -hmm. um, I like a lot of Japanese horror, both uh, movies and video games, and they all use this... Uh, I don't want to say asian -y, but this... There's this Asian sort of music that they all use. It had it, the sound design uses like this, like when the gr when the demon like shows up at the end of a corridor, mm. turns and looks, and then goes away. You hear the the, the bell chime. The little bell chimes. It, that's a very Asian aesthetic. Yeah, it, they, they they all use it, and that cr stuff creeps me out still. Yeah, I like those in lieu of jump scares. I like mm -hmm. that they didn't try jump scares in this because I feel like oh that's that's, just... a, that's a good strength. I'll, I'll give it yeah. that. 
If I saw like a, a little girl look at me and then I just heard a bell chime, I would turn around and <laughs> leave. Just like, nope. What if she looked just like your missing sister? Uh, fuck my sister. <laughs> Oh my god, are you Stephen King? No, I'm Dean Koontz. Oh. Kings and Koontz, Daniel, what is your king for Kakurimbo? The aesthetic. I, I, I like the fox masks, I like the music. J just kind of the feel of everything. Uh, atmosphere, that's the word I'm looking for. The, the atmosphere is very strong in this. Daniel. Or not Daniel. <laughs> Half. Other Daniel. <laughs> Other Daniel. <laughs> My king is that this actually, this may, this this thing in, interests me in the way that I would actually like to see more. It gives you a taste of something, and like I'm actually kind of fascinated by the world that they're in it. Like I would love to see more, have something more developed about it. Well, like, the studio who did this closed. I know. <laughs> they made like three things and shit the bed. <laughs> yeah. I, f I feel like, I don't know if you I, could do a series, but I feel like you probably could have done a slightly longer movie with this. I, I feel like, like you could give the, I feel like you could make these characters actual characters. And like, fl like and uh, flesh it out a little flesh bit. Flesh it out a little bit, kind of give it more of a, a background kind of on it. Like, I feel like there's potential here. It's like just sc scratching the surface of something that actually could be very good. Weirdly, my, my king is the potential of this film. <laughs> uh, my king is also the, the atmosphere, the tone, the music. And Koontz. Uh, exposition demon at the end. I, I thought that, uh, especially because they just flat out show what's happening to the kids, mm -hmm. didn't need the demon to tell me at that point. Mm -hmm. I would have just thought it would have been creepier if we would just see what's going on. I think that would have been more atmospheric. My Koontz is the potential of this film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, there's so many cool things here that just didn't get explored, and I would have loved to see more. My Koontz is the animation. I... I'm always just like it. Uh, I'm always going to choose practical effects over CGI. I'm always going to choose hand drawn over a hand drawn animation, especially with anime mm. over um, computer generated. Animation. Oh yeah, I always prefer like the hand drawn methods where we're like that. Mm -hmm. I but I this is kind of one of those things where like it's just nice to see every now and then. It's like it's like having just a random thing that you don't ask for every now and then. Okay, ranking. I'm putting it below Call Girl of Cthulhu. It's your new uh, number five. six. Call Girl of Cthulhu. Oh, sorry. Wrong Cthulhu. <laughs> your new number five. <laughs> In your top five. It's my new number 52. But for uh, under uh, the first ring Japanese theatrical movie and above the Mermaid Forest anime series. Better than Ring Cosenbon? It's not better than Ring Cosenbon. Okay. <laughs> Even with the... Uh, the surprise incest. I just had such a great time watching and talking about that movie. Is it better than A Return to Salem's Lot? <sighs> Man, um, I liked it more than Exorcist the Beginning. Did you like it more than Blade 2? Kinda, yeah. Is it better than a return to Salem's Lot? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna put it right below a return to Salem's Lot because that is such a good like drink with your buddy movie. Okay, so it's your new number fifty below a return to Salem's Lot and above Blade Two. Take that, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that surprises me, but it, it also benefits from being twenty five minutes long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. And I don't have to put on a blade sword to watch it. Homework. If you had to, if you had an infinite energy source powered by dead children, how would you utilize it? A nightlight. I'm scared of the dark. All right. Infinite nightlight. <laughs> infinite. Night. Infinite light. 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 No bad dreams ever again. Okay. Uh, mine would be a. Uh, uh, an execution chamber for people who kill children. Hmm. <laughs> so, so it's self-sufficient. It, 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 yeah, yeah, it's just an in the cycle. If I, it's a spiral. If I say that I would use use it to uh, recharge my my double A's for my sex toys, does that make me a pedo bear? No. Than that. <laughs> That was my second choice, actually, was that one. I had written down like five different sex things, but I thought he'd give me shit for it, so I didn't <laughs> use that one. Okay, for further reading, um, King of Thorn, Memories, 
Um, I, I wrote down Blood the Last Vampire, but I don't really know about it. I, but it, I think Blood the Last Vampire is kind of that same vein. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I, I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. I like it. <coughs> I, I give that one a B positive. <laughs> Any other recommendations? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think I can beat that. All right. Uh, upcoming on the Horror Babylon, next Sunday, we are watching the Disney animated adaptation of The Legend of Sleepy. Sleepy Hollow. Oh, not yet. Not okay, yet. Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, and then our next book episode on Sunday, March 3rd, is The Wastelands by Stephen King. Um, and that guy who reads those with us, he'll be there. So that'd be cool. And that's the third, bu the third book of the Dark Tower series. Our next two bonus episodes on February 29th, we're going to do another Treehouse of Horror of Babylon. And then on March 7th, Four Horsemen is having us do an episode on the Princess Bride. And that week will also be our giveaway of our Princess Bride MTG secret layer, which is super exciting. Speaking of exciting, thank you to our patrons, Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons. Hiya! Happy Easter! And Logan, the, the Full, Full Metal, Metal patron. patron. And Ben, the, the Fourth. Patron of Hope and Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain. Oh, up. she makes it wane. And thank you to Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall at Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or you can shop online at shop. Four Horsemen Comics to Comics to Comics. To Comics. Buy the Comics at the Four Horsemen. Buy all the Comics. All the Comics. All the comics. Okay, uh, guys. So, uh, real quick. I know we need two more, but so far, who do you favor in the game of hide and seek out of these five? Um, I'm going to say the same as your battle royal to Mia or Abby. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, same so far. <laughs> yeah, no offense to the guys, but <laughs> I don't know any of these people. Guys don't know how to hide or no. seek. No, we prefer tag. <laughs> yeah. Red Rover. <laughs> Why what, why don't you come over? over? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That's funny. Thanks, so, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you guys for rewatching and, and watching Kaku Renbo with me and recording a, tonight. It was a good time. It, it was a good time. It ranked a lot higher than I thought it was going to. Yeah, number 50. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you to our patrons. Stay tuned for our socials and stay scary. Stay scary. Stay and scary congratulations everybody. again to Logan for winning that giveaway. Woo! Woo! Full Metal Deadite. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that The Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Stay scary. Mm -hmm.